everyone. I'm here at the Bible reading. I hope you guys are having a good day. I know it's been a while. Sorry, it's been a couple days. Um, Layla, we did not get the truck fixed last night, but we did make it home, as you can see. And um, Sherman took it to the shop today, and um, the, the mechanic guy got it fixed. So, and he did it for free. So, God bless him. Thank you, Father, for that mechanic, and please bless him. And he's a really nice guy. Sherm takes stuff there to him all the time and asks his opinion and he looks at stuff and everything with George. You know, unless he, unless he you know, does something big or whatever. But um, a friend of mine gave me this book of poems, and you know I love poems. And some a friend had gave it to her in 1980. So when I'm done with it, I'm going to send it to one of my friends and I'm going to write in it like this one did and I'm going to put um, the year and my name and I you know, pass it on. Let someone else enjoy it. I've heard of people doing that with letters and stuff and people from all over would get it and sign it and then the next person that got it, you know, they'd see it and be like, wow, look where this book has been and stuff, you know. I'll try to read two today. The first one is called Dear Friends, and it is by Helen Steiner Rice. I believe all these are. We all need words to live by, to inspire us and guide us. Words to give us courage when the trials of life betide us. And the words that never fell us are the words of God above. Words of comfort and of courage, filled with wisdom and with love. They are ageless and enduring. They are lived through generations. There's no question left unanswered in our Father's revelations. And in this ever-changing world, God's words remain unchanged. For though through countless ages, they have been often rearranged. The truth shines through all changes, just as bright today as when our Father made the universe and breathed his life in men and the words of inspiration that I write for you today are just the old enduring truths said in a rhythmic way. And if my borrowed words of truth in some way touch your heart, then I am deeply thankful to have had a little part in sharing these God-given lines and I hope you'll share them too with family, friends, and loved ones, and all those dear to you. And that one's called Dear Friends. And I'll read this next one for you guys, and it's a lot shorter. It is called Everyone Needs Someone. People need people, and friends need friends. And we all need love, for a full life depends. Not on vast riches or great acclaim. Not on success or on worldly fame. But just in knowing that someone cares and holds us close in their thoughts and prayers. For only the knowledge that we have understood makes every day living feel wonderfully good. And we rob ourselves of life's greatest need when we lock up our hearts and fail to heed the outstretched hand reaching to find a kindred spirit whose heart and mind are lonely and longing to somehow share our joys and sorrows and to make us aware that life's completeness and richness depends on the things we share with our loved ones. All right, guys, and that's the two I read to read you guys today. And the book is actually called Everyone Needs Someone. Let me read this last one here on the back because it's tiny. The Priceless Gift. The priceless gift of life is love, for with the help of God above, love can change the human race and make this world a better place. For love dissolves all hate and fear, and makes our vision bright and clear. 
so we can see and rise above our pettiness on wings of gold. All right, guys, so let's get started with the Bible reading. Let me get y'all set up here. Okay, Sherm. Um, let me get you set up, Sherm. We'll be reading Luke chapter 11, verse 37 through 12, 7. And we'll be reading Psalm 78, verses 1 through 31. And Proverbs chapter 12, verses 19 and 20. And the Lord give us that after the videos. Get your Bible. Get your Bible. I've been wanting to have these Easter gifts until we're done. I'm sorry I got that air on, but it's not the air, it's the fan for outside. But it is so hot, I'm like burning up. I had the fan on, but I turned it off because it was even louder. So I hope you guys can hear okay. Okay, sure. Tell me where you are. Yeah, okay, you're set up then. Okay, so in Luke today, we'll be talking about woes on the Pharisees and the experts in the law warnings and encouragements. All right, so let's start. You ready? You ready, Sherm? Sure? 11, 37. 11, 37. Ready? When Jesus had finished speaking, a Pharisee invited him to eat with them. So he went in and reclined at the table. But the Pharisee was surprised when he noticed that Jesus did not first wash before the meal. Didn't wash his hands. But listen to what Jesus says. Then the Lord said to him, Now then, you Pharisees, clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. You foolish people, did not the one who made the outside make the inside also? But now, as for what is inside you, be generous to the poor, and everything will be clean for you. I'm not sure. I thought they don't get into the whole thing here, like um, I was hoping, like in other parts did. Like Jesus is saying, what goes into the body, you know, that don't matter it goes out but what you speak what comes out of the body when you speak that is what matters because that is from your heart okay so that is what men do woe to you wait woe to you pharisees because you give god a tenth of your mint rue and all other kinds of garden herbs but you neglect justice and the love of God. You should have practiced the latter without leaving the former undone. Woe to you, Pharisees, because you love the most important seats in the synagogues and respectful greetings in the marketplaces. They want attention. They just want attention. Everybody to look at them. Look at them as the pretty much God on earth, if you want to call it that. One of the experts in the law answered him, like, Woe to you, because you are like unmarked graves, which people walk over without knowing it. One of the experts in the law answered him, Teacher, when you say these things, you insult us also. Jesus replied, And you experts in the law, Woe to you, because you load people down with burdens they can hardly carry, and you yourselves will not lift a finger to help them. You know, gave them, tells them all these rules that the, Phar the Pharisees, Sadducees, teachers of the law, they tell the people all these rules to do, to follow God's will and stuff, but they themselves, them themselves don't do it. 
and they don't help the people when they need help with it as well. So that's what Jesus is calling them hypocrites. Woe to you, because you build tombs for the prophets, and it was your ancestors who killed them. So you testify that you approve of what your ancestors did. They killed the prophets, and you build their tombs. Because of this, God, in his wisdom, said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill, and others they will persecute. Therefore, this generation will be held responsible for the blood of all the prophets that has been shed since the beginning of the world. From the blood of Abel, That is, who's able? Who's able, Sean? Adam and Eve's son. Adam and Eve's son. First child, you could say. Of Cain and Abel. From the blood of Abel to of Zechariah, who was killed between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, this generation will be held responsible for it all. Woe to you, experts in the law, because you have taken away the key to knowledge. You yourselves have not entered, and you have hindered those who were entering. When Jesus went outside, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law began to oppose him fiercely and to besiege him with questions. waiting to catch him in something he might say. Always trying to, uh, always trying to see if they could catch Jesus in his words. Never happened. Now we're going to finish it with warnings and encouragement with chapter 12. Meanwhile then, a crowd of many thousands had gathered so that they were trampling on one another. Jesus began to speak first to his disciples, saying, be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight, and what you have whispered in the ear in the inner room will be proclaimed from the roofs. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that can do no more. So don't be worried about your mortal body. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who after your body has been killed, fear God, has authority to throw you into hell. Does your spirit will either go to heaven or to hell. That's what you need to worry about, your spirit, not your body. As I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. And that's where we're stopping with Luke. Okay, and our psalm, Psalm 78, Sherm. I turned that lighter off for you. Can you see better? Psalm 78, verses 1 through 31. So we're not finishing it today. A Maskell of Asaph. You ready? My people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter hidden things, things from of old. Sounds like Jesus, huh? Things we have heard and known, things our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the wall in Israel. 
which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children. So the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born. And they, in turn, would tell their children. And that's how our kids learn about God. You have to tell them, because if you don't, the world will teach them not to know Him. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget His deeds, but would keep His commands. They would not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation whose hearts were not loyal to God, whose spirits were not faithful to Him. The men of Ephraim, though armed with bows, turned back on the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant and refused to live by His way. God wanted them to fight that army there because um, the, he was going to have them defeat them, but they turned back and they didn't fight. They forgot what he had done, the wonders he had showed them. He did miracles in the sight of their ancestors, in the land of Egypt, in the region of Zone. He divided the sea and led them through. He made the water stand up like a wall. Imagine the sea, how tall the water would be. He guided them with the cloud by day and with light from the fire all night. He split the rocks in the wilderness and gave them water as abundant as the seas. So they would have water to drink. He brought streams out of a rocky crag and made water flow like rivers. But they continued to sin against him, rebelling in the wilderness against the Most High. They willfully put God to the test by demanding the food they craved. God was literally giving them bread from heaven, and the bread of angels, but they wanted meat. Okay? They spoke against God. They said, can God really spread a table in the wilderness? True, he struck the rock and water gushed out. Streams flowed abundantly. Can he also give us bread? She was given them bread. Can he supply meat for his people? When the Lord heard this, he was furious. His fire broke out against Jacob and his wrath rose against Israel, for they did not believe in God or trust in his deliverance. Yet he gave the command to the skies above and opened the door of heaven. He rained down manna for the people to eat. He gave them the grain of heaven. Human beings ate the bread of angels. He sent them all the food they could eat all the food they could eat like. He let loose the east wind from the heavens and by his power made the south wind blow. He rained meat down on them like dust, birds like sand on the seashore. He made them come down into their camp all around their tents. They ate till they were gorged. He had given them what they craved. But before they turned from what they craved, while, even while the food was still in their mouths, God's anger rose against them. He put to death the sturdiest among them, cutting down the young men of Israel. And these are the people that are in the wilderness that God rescued from Egypt. That's what we're stopping today with that one, verse 31. Psalm 78, we're stopping with verse 31. And, um, I don't know, they just kept putting God to the test, putting God to the test. Those are the people he rescued from the land of Egypt from being slaves. And that's why most of them didn't see the promised land. That's why it took 40 years to get there. Because God was going to let that generation die out. And they would not enter the promised land for all the wickedness they had done, but their children, you know, would get to go in there, which then the leader became Joshua of them. 
you know, the people. Okay, now let's finish it up with Proverbs chapter 12, verses 19 and 20. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. You tell so many lies, they're eventually going to slip. And people are going to know you're a liar. You've got to keep covering up one lie with another lie, with another lie, with another lie. And then you're not going to remember what your story was. Deceit is in the hearts of those who plot evil, but those who promote peace have joy. All right, guys, that was our Bible reading. I hope it touched your hearts. I know this took a while. I didn't know the reading was that long. Um, so I hope we got time for the prayer request. What's wrong? Oh, no. okay. The prayer request. Please keep my mom, Rhonda Karshner, in your prayers. Sherm, he's in a lot of pain today. Cindy and Jim Welsh, Cindy's in a lot of pain. Please pray for her that um, she's got plantar fasciitis in her heel. And it hurts her really, really badly. And it, it's, the pain's also going up her leg and into her hip, you know, like sciatica, like I have on both sides. So please keep her in prayer for that because she's in a lot of pain in the foot. And she don't got hardly no energy and she just don't. She's always busy doing stuff, but she's in a lot of pain doing it. Please pray for Dora Parker, Dean Deddy, the Burke family, the Doles family, Elizabeth Jeffries, Judy Thompson, Layla and her son Emil, Danette Rager, Joyce Light, Abby and Jimmy Myers, and Levi Dempsey, who continues to do good, as far as I've been told. I'll let you guys know if I hear any change on him or if he gets when he gets to come home or whatever. But I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible. Bye guys. God bless.